Emil Andre. Um, more than anything, he is super freaking fun to watch right now. Like, that is my big takeaway, yeah. is they have a guy who does stuff. Uh, he's confident, decisive, skilled. Seems like a good guy to have at the top of the power play. Uh, he's thrown some hits. He's averaging as many blocks per six blocks per 60 as Cam York. Uh, in eight games, he's put 11 shots on goal. Jamie Drysdale has 12 through 15 games. Um, yeah, that, I feel like... I'm, but before, before we get into Andre, because I do want to bring this up, like, we don't have to... Like, in the process of being excited about Andre, you don't have to crap on Jamie Drysdale. I feel like I too, 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 many, too many fans I see on social and even in our Discord, like, their reaction to Andre exceeding expectations is then to spend 10 minutes complaining about Jamie Drysdale. Like, can we just enjoy Emil Andre? I am simply creating some context. I'm just saying. Jamie Drysdale. That was just a little bit of a rant on my part. Jamie Drysdale has played nearly twice as many games and has one more shot on goal. I am just creating some context the same way as I did as many blocks per 60 as Cam York. This Cam York blocked more shots than anyone on the team last year, except Nick Sealer, who is a puck magnet. Yeah. Like it's what just he does. Saying, <laughs> just saying he's doing some things at a rate of other guys that you maybe expect more out. Yeah. Of. They have a track record of, of us knowing they're actually true talent. Good at that thing. Like there's a real chance. Andre's just kind of feeling it right now. And his play dips at some point. You would expect that he's from a 22-year-old yeah, with his first handful of NHL games. But it's hard to look at him and come up with stuff you just, like, oh, that's not sustainable. Like, he's just doing good stuff. I think what we're, what we're seeing, at least, is, like, I don't know if this is his, I mean, if, if this is his normal, the Flyers have a stud. But even if this is his ceiling, like that's pretty exciting because his ceiling is pretty darn good. His ceiling like, is real good. Looking at his advanced metrics, he's played in eight games this year. He's got a 57.56 expected goals for percentage of five on five. Like that isn't just good. That's great. That is yeah. straight up impact level. And yeah, some of that was when he was playing down the lineup in a sheltered third pair. Last couple games, though, he ain't been getting sheltered. He's been facing off against top players. Now, not every shift. They, they've bounced things around. He's not getting every shift with Travis Sanheim. Yeah, Sanheim had like five more minutes yeah. last night than him. But he's getting enough. He's not like they are not saying we can only put this, you know, five nine rookie out there against third lines. Nah, he's getting some tough shifts. He's more than holding his own. He's helping the Flyers carry play. He is. And that's another thing I really liked. I think it was the Carolina game for him. A little rough. It was wasn't, bad. Wasn't great. Yeah. 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 That one where he like toe picked <laughs> while he was trying yeah. to cover the rush at the beginning of the third period. That's the, the play that leads to a um, Jack Roscovich goal. Um, bad game. But and since he's been great since. And that's something. So if you haven't read my uh, my article, I published it early this morning on, uh, on all phly.com for diehards only because it is an in-depth feature on one Emil Andre. And one thing that John Tortorella has told us on multiple occasions, it's very clearly the thing he likes the most about Emil Andre, is he loves how quickly Andre shakes off mistakes. He loves it because he's like, look, I know in the modern NHL, these guys are going to make mistakes. They take risks. They make mistakes. What I want to see is that after he makes a mistake, number one, he acknowledges that he made it because that was the Ivan Provorov problem. It was like, okay, everyone else sucks. Yeah, I'm great. Yeah, that wasn't my mistake. I didn't turn the puck over. It was because the guy wasn't standing in the right place and I would have passed to him otherwise. Like, no, you have to acknowledge when you're making the mistake. And Andre does that. And then he immediately forgets about it. That Carolina game was bad. That was a real bad game. That was reminiscent for him of the games he had when he His made the team four. last year. Yeah. And you're like, uh-oh, is the floor falling out from under him? Then against Tampa, he was good. And then against Florida, he was great. And that just shows that he's not letting one bad game get in his head. He immediately forgets it. He's like a goalie. He's like a goalie who just like forgets the weak goal he gave up and then and stops the next 20. I'll even point to last night's game. Uh, he picks up the assist. He got it to Mish, who got it to TK on the team's second power play. First power play, they're setting up almost something exactly the same, whether it was going to be a one-touch pass or a one-time or two Mishkov, and he just totally fanned on it. Didn't bother him in the least. They no. went right back to it, and it was yeah. like it's there, yeah. and it was there again, and they got it, and it, and it, it resulted in a goal. He's just confident, and so much yeah. of 
what John Tortorella wants is that quick decision making. Yeah. You can't be decisive unless you're confident. Like I'm making the right read. I'm putting the puck in the right place. Yeah. You have to think that in order to do it. He's both right now. And it's super funny. He had that end to end chance last night. He's just doing good stuff. Yeah, he had that one where he like basically set up <clears throat> Travis Connecty for yeah. a tap and goal. And yeah, just... yeah, he got the one to <laughs> Connecty down low. Yeah. Connecty versus the empty net last night was a better, much better fight than the Eric Johnson fight. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know. The empty net kind of kicked his ass. But <laughs> um, like, it oh, was. Uh, Emil Andre is just so freaking impressive right now. And I saw this tweet from uh, Alex Appleyard, one of our contributors here at PHLY. And uh, it's only eight games. Again, it, it's not like huge sample here. But when you talk about goals for Corsi four, these are results. Yeah. The results are he has been their best defenseman. Well, and then the individual chances. Far, but uh, Travis Sanheim, I think Sanheim's been better. Travis Sanheim has been excellent. And I even have to give him the credit. Um, hard to argue with what they're getting out of Travis Sanheim right now. You made the case that right now, and I think especially since the York injury. Yeah. He's been better than he was to start last year. I think so. Overall. Yeah. And I'm having trouble disagreeing. Yeah. Uh, but Emil Andre getting some awesome results. And this is, I think, one of the reasons it's so fun, like, is this is found money. Yeah. Like, we expect Emil Andre to be part of this thing at some point, and hopefully he's good, but we had no idea what he was. He is very much right now, like, is he a boat? <laughs> is he <laughs> you know? a boat? And... I am just uh, extremely excited about what they're getting out of Andre. I mean, a couple things it does. Number one is if he's for real. And look, we're eight games in. Even John Tortorella said on the road trip, I think it was in Tampa. or No, it was in Fort Lauderdale after a practice. He even said, look, it's a small sample. We'll see how he does over the long term. But so far, I've liked what I've seen. We're not that far into this. He could tail off. Sure. But... Signs are good that he looks like an above average NHL defenseman. Like right now, that's that's my perception that whether he dips in, in two weeks or in a month or whatever, that like he looks to me like he can be in a, an above average NHL, NHL defenseman, not a star. I'm not looking at him and being like, oh, man, yeah, he's going to be a number one. Like, no, I'm not there with him. But he looks to me like he has the tools, both skill wise and mentally, which are just as important, especially for a defenseman, to be a quality top four defenseman. If he's a quality top four defenseman, we agree that Cam York is a quality top four defenseman. And I don't see any age-related decline out of Travis Sanheim. If anything, he seems to be getting better with age. Suddenly, you have three top four defensemen that are presumably part of your longish term future. I mean, Travis Sanheim, you're kind of stuck with him. So, like... I don't know how you're going to trade him, so he's pretty much part of your future, so you might as well just hope he stays this good because I, I, he's got a no-trade clause and he doesn't want to leave. Nah. So, But if if all three of those guys are top four defensemen, suddenly your defense is kind of coming together. You still need that clear-cut number one. You do, and that's a, that's a long-term problem. But if you get that guy and then you have York, Sanheim, and Andre, and then, you know, okay, suddenly the pieces are kind of falling into place in a way where you can look at it and you can be like, oh, you know, this is a, this defense might have the start of something. The second thing, and this goes back to what I was talking about earlier, if Andre is developing quicker than we thought, I think this gives them more time yes. to try to unearth what they think is there in Jamie Drysdale. It cuts down on the urgency because suddenly – you don't have to force feed Jamie Drysdale top power play minutes. You don't have to play him in the top four. You can use him in a sheltered third pair role and work with him for a year, for a year and a half, and see if you can get out of him what they think is in there. Now, maybe it's not. Maybe it's never going to happen. Maybe he just doesn't think the game at a high enough level. He doesn't have the instincts, and he's just never going to be anything special. But they think there's something there, and honestly. I've watched enough of Brad Shaw to kind of give him the benefit of the doubt. Like, if he could fix Rasmus Ristolainen and turn him into a solid NHL defenseman, given how bad he was by the numbers for the bulk of his NHL career, I'm going to guess that given enough time, Brad Shaw can turn Dreisel into something. The problem was, was that given their depth on defense, they kind of had little choice but to throw Dreisel yeah. out of the wolves because it's like, well, somebody's <clears throat> got to take the minutes. If Andre continues to be maybe not this good but at least 
quality top four NHL defenseman good for the next couple years, and then we see what he ultimately turns into, <laughs> that gives them some extra time to play with to take it easy on Drysdale once he's obviously back from this injury, which my understanding is it's relatively minor. He was in the locker room after the game. I don't think it's a major thing. And I also I have a hunch that, you know, given the the roster gymnastics that are necessary, may have been a situation where it's like, ah, you're, you're a little banged up. Take a week take off. Take a week off. It's fine. Yeah. Point being is that I think this gives them a little bit more time to, uh, to, to figure out what they have in Drysdale and not rush him into a role that he's not yet ready for. And that's huge for both. Like, they need Jamie Drysdale to be something. Yeah, they do. They really, it, it would doesn't. Be, it, it would be a, I don't think it would kill them. Yeah. But, man, it would hurt. Yes. Given what they gave up to get him. It, it, and what could have been behind door number two. Exactly. There's, even if you're looking at Cutter Goche right now, it's like, he's been benched a few times. He still hasn't scored. He's hanging out on the perimeter too much. He had that big turnover. Maybe he's, yeah, maybe he's going to turn out to be a goal scorer, but not a 50 goal, yeah. that guy. Not, not a core piece yeah. of a contender. But there is still always the, well, could it have been Marco Rossi? Yeah. Could well, it have been? pretty good. Like, could it have been another yeah. something other than Drysdale? And yeah, that will fair. always exist. Absolutely. And you can't really afford to make those mistakes when you're rebuilding. No, asset management is really important. And that would mean that you had a top five pick and yeah. you got what, a a third pair power play two guy that's not that's not going to cut it like, you can't have those kinds of mistakes and become a legitimate contender legitimately what we thought emil andre was who they drafted in the second round yeah like ah oh, yeah nice little maybe third pair put him on the power play do some things for you like yeah you need more out of drysdale than that yeah. even if andre and yeah. this like you said Buying them that it buys time, them time. It does. is huge. Whether it's to get him healthy, whether him to get mentally up to speed, it just really helps his development. Yeah. Less pressure. Yeah. Less pressure overall. We all silly like the mayor. 